Hello, and welcome to this Advent Reflection for the fourth Sunday of Advent. As we light our fourth Advent candle for the Blessed Virgin Mary, be still, breathe deeply and regularly, and let God have room in your life and just a little of your time. Our reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In many ways, there is an amazing simplicity to this scene. This is just an ordinary home. Mary is part of an ordinary family. No doubt she had to busy herself with jobs around the house, just as we do now. Yet here is another world, or the deeper reality of this world is to me. Dignity and meaningfulness come to the territory. Every place has the potential to reveal a community or it will be forever absent. Sanctity is part of our heritage. It comes with being human, and is not earned, it is to be enjoyed. We are great mysteries as much as the coming of Gabriel to Mary. The mystery of the presence is always with us to be enjoyed and not be looked upon as a problem. In our ordinary surroundings, God is present. So here is a very young woman, only just entering her teens, faced with a vision of the angel Gabriel, or more simply, a message from God. The first part of the message is for all of us. The Lord is with you. Do we really take those words to heart? God is with us. He comes to us today as he did yesterday and will do tomorrow. We are in his presence and in his love. You can ignore him if you want, but he will not leave you. Mary pondered over these words. We might like to do the same. Awareness of the presence of God often has a better chance of being revealed if we think over God's promises as Mary did. We know that though it was an ordinary house, it was here that Mary met with God. Mary was doing household tasks and then perhaps stopped to say a prayer or recite a piece of scripture. Maybe she stopped to think of Joseph and their forthcoming marriage. It is in this ordinariness, this everydayness, that God sends his messenger to Mary. 
Mary has been chosen not for her outward beauty, or for her clever mind, or for her importance, though she might have had all, all of these. She was chosen because she was ready to do God's will. She was just an ordinary young woman engaged to a carpenter. Yet God chooses her because she is open to him and wants to do his will. For a moment, heaven and earth, angels and humans, wait to hear Mary's response. God wants her to be a special instrument, a special person. Mary is fearful, but she is reassured. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. Like Joshua before her, Mary is on the edge of a new world, a world that will change for us, all due to her response. Mary is asked to be the God-bearer, to give birth to Jesus, and her response is naturally, how? The reply is, through the power of God. In many ways, it sounds like an ordinary conversation, and yet it defies description. We must not lose sight of the fact that heaven and earth are one, they are not separate. At all times, we are in God, and God is in us. God comes to this world, he comes to his own, and his own do not receive him. Mary receives him by saying, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The choice was hers. She could accept or reject him. Her acceptance of God's will is not a simple one. Joseph will have to be told. Others will hardly understand. Doing God's will does not come cheaply, but by doing his will, the world is changed. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The vision fades and Mary gets on with her jobs. But she and we know that God is with her and has called her to do a very special job. And let us pray. God, our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Thou lowly man. 